Okay, <clears throat> we're back. And so, again, the null hypothesis is that the true mean is 100. And so, if that's true, and if the standard deviation of IQ is 15, and we have a sample size of 100 individuals, then the standard error is 1.5, which again, as we were just talking about, tells us that most of the time, if this is the true mean, then a sample of 100 drawn from a population um, with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, then 68% of the time a sample average of 100 should be between these two numbers, between 98 and a half and uh, 101 and a half, within one standard error. And so if we take a sample mean and that's exactly what happens, 68.26%, uh, if our sample mean is right in this region, well that's precisely what we expected to happen because most of the time our sample mean should be in between those two numbers. Not all of the time, right? 32.5, uh, sorry, 32 percent, we'll just use round numbers, 32 percent of the time I could either get a sample mean that's larger than 101.5 or I could get a sample mean that's lower than 98.5. So uh, if I get a sample mean between 98 0.5 and 101.5, that's exactly what we expected to happen. So we would not reject the null hypothesis that the sample mean is 100 because it's exactly where the sample mean should be if indeed the sample mean is 100. So suppose our sample mean was, sorry, if the population means 100, but suppose our sample mean was 99. Um, let me draw that in here. So suppose we got a sample mean right over here at 99. Then, you know, that's not exactly equal to the population mean of 100, but you don't expect your sample mean to be exactly equal to the be equal to what the population mean is or what you think it is, right? But what happens as that sample mean that we get gets further and further and further away? from what the null hypothesis says the population mean is. What you have to answer is how far does the sample mean have to be away from the what we thought the population mean was, 100, how far does it have to get away from 100 before we really start to doubt that this story we're being sold is true, that the population mean really is 100? Well, Again, if, it, if it's within one standard deviation uh, or one standard error here, I wouldn't suspect that anything strange is going on. I'd say sure, the population mean could still be 100 with a sample mean in this region. But uh, what if your sample mean was way over here at 108? Well, if the population mean was really 100, I would expect the sample mean to maybe be over here 68 percent of the time. Now uh, it could be that the uh, you could be have a sample mean that's two standard errors away. So let's draw that in. So uh, plus or minus two standard errors is taking us down to uh, 97 and 103. So what percent of the time should a sample mean at least be within two standard errors of the mean? Well, 95% or 95.44% if you want to be technically accurate. So 95.44% of the time the uh, sample mean should be within, let me stretch that out so we see exactly where it is, 95.44% uh, of the time a sample mean should be within two standard errors if you're using a normal distribution as we are right here. So if I'm not more than 95% sure that if the true mean really was 100, if, if more than 95% of the time a sample mean should be uh, between 97 and 103, 
then you have to ask yourself, why is it that my, uh, let me change this to red over here, that why is it that my sample mean is way over here at 108? Well, there are two explanations for that. Explanation number one, it's possible that you just got a weird sample, that your 100 people that you sampled just happen to randomly be extremely, extremely smart. That is a possibility. It happens sometimes. It's just like sometimes you could flip a coin 10 times in a row and it come up all heads. It, it can happen. But you have to start to doubt the fact that it's a fair coin at some point. Is it after 10 heads or 100 heads or 200 heads in a row that you really start to doubt it? Well, everybody has to set their own limits as to when they stop believing that it's a fair coin, or in this case, when they stop believing that the average IQ is really 100, and you have to start doubting. Well, it could be that I just got a weird sample, or maybe it's more likely that this is not the real distribution that my sample means are coming from, because the real mean is not 100. Perhaps the real mean is really something closer to 108. Maybe it's 104, 106, 108, or, or even 110. But at some point, you have to stop believing. You have to really start seriously doubting that 100. And so it, is it when the sample mean is more than one standard deviation away? Or is it after it's more than two standard deviations away? Or is it after, let's uh, draw in three standard deviations. Uh, 95.5 would be three standard errors or standard deviations. You know, sometimes I'll use those terms interchangeably because really a standard error is a standard deviation. And 104.5. Well, again, let's think about the three standard deviations. As we talked about before, a sample mean should be within three standard errors. Uh, 99. 0.72 percent. Actually, I looked up today, and it's uh, most tables give 99.73 or 99.74 percent here. So let me correct myself. Uh, I don't want to to persist in using that wrong number. So if 99.73 percent of the time, if 100 is the real average. Uh, almost all the time your sample mean should be within um, three standard deviations of that 100. At 108, clearly you are not there in that range anymore. So you, you, you really would start to doubt anything, certainly three standard deviations. If your sample mean is above 104.5 or if your sample mean is below 95.5, um, you're going to reject that null hypothesis that the average IQ of people in North Carolina is the same as everyone else, is equal to 100. So let's talk a little more about my claim that you can't calculate the probability that your theory is true given you see some sort of estimate, but you can calculate the probability that you would get an estimate like you did uh, assuming a theory is true. So let's, let's, let's look at that. Um, I've cleaned up the graph a little bit here. Let's suppose that your estimate was exactly 103. What is the probability that we would see an estimate like this? Well, what does like this mean? One way to think about what like this means is, what is the probability that if the null hypothesis was true, that I should have gotten an estimate that was closer to 100 than two standard deviations away. This is a typical way we answer this question. Well, 95.44% uh, of the time, I should have gotten an estimate that was closer to 100 if 100 was the true mean. Again, that's the assumption that you, you begin with. Supposing 100 was the true mean, there's a 95.44% chance I should have gotten a sample average closer. 
Normally, instead of calculating it that way, we calculate what's called a p-value. And a p-value is uh, what is the probability that I could have gotten a sample mean more than two standard deviations away. Since my estimate, I'm assuming, was exactly two standard deviations away, what is the probability that I could have seen something farther away? Well, if I should have gotten something closer than that, 95.44% of the time, then in this case, the p-value would be equal to um, 0 0.0456, 4.56%. And what that's telling us is there's only a 4.56% chance that if the null hypothesis was true, that I could get an estimate this far away or further. And that provides evidence that we should doubt that that is, that 100 is the truth. Doesn't prove it though.